I did, you know, I did get a wild hair up my ass about a year ago to keep working out and like to push it a little bit. I had the, I had this amazing opportunity, right? I went over to the Middle East for a little while to perform for our troops, which was incredible. Oh. <laughs> Fellatio mostly, but still. <laughs> Yeah, our boys in green are backed up. I think the question is, how much do you all love your country? I'm a patriot. I went over there, rolled the sleeves up, and got to work. I love watching homophobic troop supporters try to process what I just said. Like, wait, so we spent 24 hours in a plane just to go over there and suck a bunch of troop dicks? I don't get This is uh, totally against what I'm saying, but I guess don't ask, don't tell, you know? Incredible trip, trip of a lifetime, right? We did two weeks in the Middle East, otherwise known as the eyebrow capital of the world. <laughs> Just a region full of Burton Ernie's. <laughs> I've never been silently told to go fuck myself. <laughs> so many times. But yeah, like I said, three countries, eight bases, right? Did Jordan, Kuwait, and Bahrain. And we flew between all of them. And I gotta say, it was, it was a little jarring to have an Arabic-speaking pilot, which is pure racism. <laughs> it is, but it stirred up some New York City PTSD that I forgot was there. So I'm sitting in my seat and I hear <laughs> Like they have the plane already? <laughs> yeah, your sensitivity is noted and I'm not impressed. It's, Trip of a lifetime though, for real. I wanted to entertain these people, you know, these troops as best as I possibly could, both on stage and off stage. I think I took it a little too far. I volunteered to get bit by one of those marine dogs. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen the videos, the YouTube, where the guy puts on a full Michelin man padded suit? They unleash a hellhound on him, the dog runs, bites his arm, he feels nothing, everybody walks away smiling. That's not what happened to me. <laughs> Yeah, usually they give you a big, thick padded coat. They gave me a fucking windbreaker. It was very clearly sized for like a real man. Because when I put it on, I looked like a four-year-old in my father's suit jacket. The arms are dangling, even fully zipped. It exposed my entire torso. One of the Marines turned to the other and goes, is this guy about to take a chest bite? I go, am I about to take a fucking chest bite? <laughs> The other Marine was like, no, dude, it's cool. The dog's pretty precise. I was like, that's not the language I was hoping to hear. <laughs> At all. This is a big deal for me, too, because I've had a lifelong fear of dogs. Lifelong fear. Since I was eight years old, when I was eight, I got me too'd by a poodle. <laughs> I know, right? What was I wearing? But it's true, I was on the floor at a family friend's party, I was playing with toys, this dog ran up on me, got on top of me, pinned me down. It was a standard size poodle. <laughs> pinned me down, started humping the shit out of me. I couldn't get up, none of the adults could hear my screams over their laughter. <laughs> so I've just been hanging on to that for over two decades. I thought this was my opportunity to take back the night. This was not a poodle. This was a 105 pound Belgian Malamoire. <laughs> this is an absolute fur missile. First thing they had me do, right? They put me in the jacket. They're like, all right, stand across from the dog. You got to look the dog right in the eyes. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> At all. They're like, no, that's how it knows to attack you. It gets pissed. I was like, that's exactly what I thought when you said it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. They're like, you gotta do it. So I look at the dog and the dog's like, ha, ha. Looked like my wife gearing up for an argument. I was like, Jesus Christ. They're like, you ready? You ready? I'm like, not really. They're plucking hairs out of it just to get it fired up. They're like, you ready? I was like, I guess. They're like, okay, you're gonna run out there. You're gonna extend your arm. We're gonna say go. The dog's gonna run. It's gonna bite your arm. As soon as you feel the bite, you gotta bring your arm to your chest. Then you can't let it drop below 90 degrees because that's when people get hurt. Like, are you giving me fucking instructions right now on what to do mid-werewolf attack? How about you guys just pick me up off the ground, get the dog off me, and then wipe away my tears? 
They all go, no, no, don't go to the ground. That's how people die. I'm like, what? They're like, it's gonna be great, don't worry. We've never had an incident. The dog's never been through a jacket. We did it four times. The dog bit through the jacket four times. All the way through to the point where it broke skin. Right, I know, but I'm trying to act tough in front of these Marines, right? So I'm stifling all the pain. And until after the last one, I took off the jacket and I walk over to one and I'm like, hey, I, uh, I seem to be bleeding pretty profusely. <laughs> Do you think I need a shot or anything like that? The guy goes, honestly, man, you're way more likely to give the dog a disease than it is to give you one. I'm like, oh, well, that's the most hurtful response you could have come back with. Then I found out two hours later that dog got deployed to active duty. I was its final training exercise before it got sent into the real shit. It literally sharpened its teeth on me. So right now that dog is patrolling the Middle East with the worst case of HPV any dog has ever had. Guys, thank you so much. Oh my God, I appreciate you coming out. Thank you.